Hey everybody, if your air conditioner is keeping like some rooms the RV cool but not other rooms, or if the thing's roaring like Katy Perry and you want to tone it down a little bit, stay tuned. There's one easy little thing you can change on the RV that requires zero money and doesn't even need actual modifications. Whether it's RVs that are coming in on trade or people talking about the RVs they currently own, or on like user owner forums and groups like that, I very commonly hear people uh, reference things like my air conditioner doesn't keep my bedroom cool, but it keeps the living room ice cold. Can I help even that out a little bit? Or this thing's really loud. Is there a way I can tone it down? And this isn't the guarantee fix all to all of that. But did you know you can basically activate and deactivate your RV's central air conditioning system? Here's how you do it. If you reach up there, uh, there's basically just these little vents that you can open or close. Now there's a couple different types of air conditioners and there's, so there's a couple different, you know, fins and vents and little things that you can flip, but long story short, you can either open or close that. And as simple as this is, I've learned that a lot of people don't know about that. And a lot of people will just leave that open all the time. But the thing is, when you do that, you're not really fully engaging your central air system. Now, obviously this is only applying if you do have a centrally ducted air system that does have the little open and close vent system. But most RVs have something like that, especially in the world of travel trailers. Uh, maybe a little less common in fifth wheels or whatever, but you get the idea. This applies to a lot of RVs. But what's happening here is when you have those vents open, most, depending on who you talk to, I've heard anywhere from 50 to 70% of the air from the air conditioner is direct dumping here into the cabin, which doesn't leave a lot of that air left to like navigate its way down a long RV and then get into a private room, like a rear bunk room or a front bedroom or a bathroom or something like that. So what you end up with is you're, you're, you're freezing here in the middle of the RV, but on the ends of the RV where you're sleeping or something like that, you end up sweating to the oldies. Now, when you first get to your campsite, you're going to spend the majority of your time most likely in the big living area here. So it is nice to get this cooled down a little more quickly, which is why that can be a beneficial feature. Um, cause you might be wondering, well, you know, why would, why would they even include that? Because when you first get here and it's really hot, you want to cool down first, uh, get the living room cool off, then close the vents and start pumping air into the smaller rooms of the RV, which in the evening hours won't take as long to cool down. And by evening, hopefully you've found something a little more comfortable, or if it's screaming, screaming hot, and you just got to get through the day, shut the bedroom door, shut the bunk doors, pump all the cold air you can get here into the living room. And then again, in the evening hours, worry about cycling some of that air up into the bedrooms. Uh, you know, when you're not fighting quite so severe of a sun. But the thing is, when you do that, um, you're, uh, instead of dropping more air from one spot, which creates a lot of turbulence and there, a lot of noise, by starting to run the air through multiple vents, you're creating uh, multiple areas of smaller turbulence and you will tend to actually hear the air conditioner a little bit less. Um, I'm not gonna tell you it's gonna make all the difference in the world, but anything that takes the edge off can be kind of nice. And I've really found as simple as this is, a lot of people are never informed anything like this when they take their RV home. So there's a lot of people out there who may actually be damaging the coils in the AC compressor without realizing it. This might actually be something that helps the air conditioner last longer. Um, and, uh, and here's why. Those of you who have taken a couple more trips around the sun than myself, um, do you remember when air conditioning was a little bit newer in vehicles? Like if you were sitting in traffic on a hot day, you could literally start spitting snow out of the air vents from the dash of your vehicle. Um, that's because the air was cycling through and it was starting to freeze up and it was starting to freeze the air conditioner condenser coils. If <coughs> I think I literally just choked on thin air. <coughs> Hopefully I didn't swallow a bug or something. Anyway. Um, if you leave those vents open all the time, this right here is the cold air return. So some of that cold air that's shooting down here is getting instantly recycled back into it. And it's getting kind of like hyper-cooled faster than it's really intended to have happen. Um, as a result, you might actually cause uh, a little bit of a freezing effect up there. If you start seeing snowflakes spit out of this thing, you better make sure that you've got those vents shut so that you can make the, uh, that air pump through the rest of the RV. Now again, this doesn't necessarily apply to everything like a non-ducted air system or a whisper ducted air system like you see right here. You can't actually directly access the air conditioner. So that direct air dump vent system just isn't available to these. That's one of the very few downsides to a, a whisper ducted air system that doesn't get a lot of talk, but it doesn't tend to be too much of an issue because typically RVs that are outfitted with whisper air system also, by happenstance, tend to be the RVs that are uh, t feature like extra insulation, so they tend to hold their air a little bit better, and this is less of an issue. 
So there you have it. Quick, easy, cost you nothing. And if this helps uh, prevent damage to that AC uh, condenser system, it may actually save you some pretty significant repair dollars. And I hope you appreciate the little time and effort we put in uh, to putting this together for you today. If so, I'd love it if you hit that subscribe button if you're new with us. And if you're a returning member of the old RV Nerd Herd, hit that like button and let me know you're out there. So until next time, take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone. Thank you.